Hey, what's up everybody? Nick Heron here with the Fantasy Football Swagger Show. I have some breaking news for you guys today regarding Chicago Bears rookie wide receiver Kevin White. He apparently has suffered a bit of a setback regarding his injured shin, and it does sound like he is going to start the season on the pup list. He will be getting surgery this afternoon, it sounds like, to repair whatever is going on there, so hopefully it won't be a problem going forward. But again, he will start the season at least on the pup list, meaning that he will absolutely miss the first six weeks of the season without question. And rumors are that he could miss the entire NFL season. Obviously, this is a big hit to the Chicago Bears offense as a whole. Jay Cutler, you've got to move him a little bit down on your list. If you had him high at all, I do think he moves down quite a bit uh, into being basically only draftable in two QB leagues. I don't even really think he's draftable as a backup quarterback for most people at this point in time. So do think about that, obviously, when you go into your drafts. Kevin White, as far as he goes himself... Uh, to me, he moves down to basically undraftable territory right now, unfortunately, unless we're talking about a 14-team league where you've got you know four or five wide receivers on your roster, possibly up to six wide receivers on your roster. I'm just not drafting Kevin White. I don't think it's worth the investment at this point in time. I think there are other players down there that you could potentially target that will give you similar upside considering the fact that White is only probably going to have an opportunity to even play in about six six to eight games most likely if he does get onto the field. So I'm not a huge fan of doing that, even you know, given the fact that we don't really have any idea what kind of film he's actually going to put out there on the field when he actually does play. It's not like Arian Foster where we've seen Arian Foster play before. We know that once he comes back, he's probably going to perform at a pretty good level. With Kevin White, we've never seen him play before, and we just don't really have any idea what he's going to do when he's out there. So the, the big question obviously becomes who moves up because of this. Does Alshon Jeffrey move up? Well, to me, Alshon Jeffrey is going to stay right around that same level. I think he's draftable basically as a low-end wide receiver one but a very high end wide receiver too if you can acquire him. I do think his targets maybe go up just a little bit but unfortunately I think the quality of those targets could potentially drop a little bit given the fact that the Bears don't really have anyone else to immediately step in and perform at that high level like Kevin White potentially could have. Kevin White obviously a six foot three player, 215, 220 pounds, somewhere in that range and he could have been a big threat in kind of almost a twin tower type of role to Alshon Jeffrey, kind of like Brandon and Marshall was, although I don't want to compare those two. Their, their game is very dissimilar. Kevin White, more of a speedster. Brandon Marshall, obviously, more of a big possession target. But either way, uh, both players would have been a good complement to Elshon Jeffrey. So I, I, to me, like I said, target's probably going to go up just slightly for Elshon, but the quality of those targets could, could regress just a little bit. So I think it kind of evens out for him. I'm not really moving him up or down my rankings. Eddie Royal is going to move up quite a bit, but not as substantially as Marcus Wilston, the second wide receiver, or the uh, second year wide receiver, excuse me, for the Bears, who actually did score a touchdown last year, but really didn't really perform too much to, uh, in his rookie season. He is going to be looked at as the guy that you're really looking at to move up and really fill that role for Kevin White. I, I personally think Eddie Royal's role doesn't change a whole lot. I do think that, again, he'll probably get more targets with Kevin White out, but at the same time, I, I think he's probably primarily going to play out of the slot, and he might play a little bit more in the two wide receiver sets than he would have, but at the same time, though, I think Marcus Wilson is the guy that you're really looking at to, like I said, step up a little bit and play that outside role uh, when they're in the two or the three wide receiver sets. You're going to have Alshon Jeffrey on one side, Wilson on the other, and then Eddie Royal in the slot with Martellus Bennett also essentially playing out of the slot as a tight end. But... Um, you know, to me, like I said, Wilson is the guy you've got to move up a little bit, at, well, quite a bit at least. He goes from undraftable territory to basically being a wide receiver four for me, a uh, low-end wide receiver four, somewhere in that range, just because we don't really have a whole lot of information about him either. So anyway, guys, that is going to do it for this update. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you guys didn't already draft Kevin White, but if you did... Uh, probably time to, you know, at least wait for it. I, I wait and see what happens. You know, you've already invested quite a bit in him, so you might as well keep him on your roster for the time being um, and, and just kind of see what happens. Wait for the updates, and hopefully we get good news that he'll be back in week six. 
I'm just not feeling too confident about it in order to draft him myself. So uh, thank you guys again. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. We'll be bringing you guys more fantasy football news here on the channel in the coming days and weeks. So hopefully you guys will be prepared for your fantasy drafts. Good luck, everybody. Thanks again, and I'll talk to you again soon.